I want to just focus upon that phrase in verse 7. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This verse of God's precious word sets forth a principle that is real for every one of us and indeed for every person. Whether it is acknowledged or not, we all know the truth of this verse by personal experience. We know that this truth is valid, is true by our own lives. In fact, this verse is one of the surest and most simplest proofs of the veracity of Scripture because God word, God's word teaches that whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And that is a truth that is indisputable in our lives and in the world today. This text, it emphasizes the importance of the life that we have and what we do in it. Whatsoever a man soweth in this life, he will reap in the next. The kind of fruit that we will harvest in eternity is determined upon the life that we live. And how often it's true that people today treat life so trivially and so carelessly and yet, what is done in this life affects eternity. The decisions we make, the harvest that we sow now, is wrapped in the life to come. The harvest that our lives produce is evidenced of what we decided to sow. And how telling a statement that is. You can tell what a person has sown in their life by the fruit that they bear. And so this is a principle then that amplifies human responsibility. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This is a verse that tells you and me that we are responsible beings. That what we do is important. And yet we live in a time of avoidance of personal responsibility. We live in a time whenever people will do almost anything in order to avoid facing up to the consequences of their actions and their decisions. Have you noticed that so often the problems of society are blamed upon somebody else? Have you noticed that it is very rare to meet people who will own up to their own responsibilities? in their own life, in their family, and in society at large. There is always some kind of external factor upon which we blame our issues and our problems. Maybe it's our upbringing. Maybe it's the circumstances that we're found in. Maybe it's because we're not as privileged as some other individual. And so, men and women, in order to avoid responsibility turn to all sorts of things. We have insurance, we have welfare, and we notice as well that men and women in order to avoid the consequences of their actions and the effect that it has upon their mind, turn to alcohol and turn to drugs, and many other things. And I think the worst example of this in our society today the acceptance of abortion, which is but the avoidance of the responsibility that should be held by individuals for their promiscuous lifestyle. And I point that out to you in order to illustrate the fact that in our society today, men and women are doing everything they can in order to avoid the reality of this text that whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. But God says in this verse, be not deceived. I wonder whether or not today you are deceived. You've convinced yourself that what you've sown in your life, you're not going to reap. And you know, this world is designed and set up in order 
to deceive you and in order to tell you that you are just all right, that what you are doing now in your life is not really going to have consequences on you. The rebellious heart that you were born with and that has caused you to be alienated from God from the minute that you were conceived, you are told, well, it's not really that big of a problem. You can change yourself. You see, so many today are allowing themselves to be led astray. And it's exactly what occurred in the Garden of Eden. Do you remember what the devil said to Eve? Whenever God had said to her, if you eat of the fruit of the tree, you will surely die. And the devil came to her and said, ye shall not surely die. You see, that old lie is being repeated over and over and over in the world today. There is no consequences to our sin, we're told. We will not have to bear the pain and the misery and the sorrow that comes with pursuing the things of this world instead of God. But God says to you and to me tonight, be not deceived. But the word of God further says, God is not mocked. Notice that in the text. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. That word mocked there is a very vivid word. It actually means to turn up your nose at something or to sneer at. And we all know that experience when somebody turns up their nose at us and sneers at us and mocks us and makes fun of us. And this text is showing that those who live a life of sin and deceive themselves into thinking that there is no consequences for their sin are actually mocking God. Does that not reveal, therefore, that we live in a society today filled with people who are mockers of God? Here is then a principle that warns against hypocrisy. Maybe you've thought that you're able to live your life and pursue the things that you want to pursue without God and that you will be all right in the end. But God says that he is not going to be mocked. You see, this verse is speaking of people who deride the warnings of God. They think it nothing what God has said. They do not believe that God is sincere. When God says... But whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. They do not really believe that that is true. And in a sense, people live their lives today in order to prove that God is wrong. Have you not observed it? There is this sense in which there are people who throw themselves into all that the flesh longs for. And there is that sense in their minds, I am going to do this. And I'm going to demonstrate that I'm going to be all right. There is no consequences for my sin. To think in such a way is hypocritical. God is not mocked. You cannot live a rebellious life and not be punished for it. God cannot be made a fool of. And there are many who seek to do so. We read in Job 27, the verse 8, For what is the hope of the hypocrite, though he hath gained when God takes away his soul? What a thought that is. What hope is there for you tonight if you are a hypocrite whenever God comes and takes your soul? I wonder what are you sowing this evening? What is it that you are seeking in your life, spiritually speaking? What fruit are you going to reap one day in your life? Will it be death or will it be life? So I want to consider with you this verse. This principle, that whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I want you to notice that it's an evident principle. It's an evident principle. The truth of this text is observed and known by every person. 
and it is played out at every level of life, personally, in the family, and in society. You will notice the language that is used here. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And so this principle is observed in nature. You see, every farmer knows this. The kind of seed determines the kind of harvest. If you want to harvest wheat, then you sow the seeds of wheat. Do you realize that all the farmer's efforts and labor are based upon the truth of this statement? Every farmer who has ever labored and worked did so in the confidence that what he sowed, he would reap. And every time you and I sit down to a meal, I'm sure that you did that today, you sat down to a meal because of the truth of this principle. Because a farmer sowed and he wept and you ate of the fruit of his reaping. In many ways, we take this principle for granted, don't we? We just know it. What you sow is what you reap. But then as well, this principle is observed in man. In 1 Corinthians 15 and the verse 33, we read these solemn words. Evil communications corrupt good manners. And this verse is telling us that if you have wicked companions, they will spoil your morals. They will produce bad habits. And again, we are very familiar with this, aren't we? We all know the immoral effect that wicked people have, especially on young people. Have you not seen it? Young people get mixed in with the wrong crowd. They begin to be influenced by evil people. And not very long later, we see them replicating the same evil things. And so we see this principle again. What is sown is what is wrapped. The seeds of infidelity, of immorality, of idolatry that are sown in childhood spring forth in the days of adulthood in all the vices and all the lawlessness that we see in our society today. Therefore, again, I say to you, is this not an evident principle? That whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I exhort you today, do not close your eyes to the abundant evidence before you. Because it is abundant. But ask yourself today, how is this principle working out in my life? Am I really living in the reality of it? Oh, what a telling question that is. Are you living today in the reality that what you're sowing now, you're going to bear the fruit of in days to come? I'm sure that if we did, we would live very differently. So it is an evident principle. But then secondly, it is a blessed principle. If you look in the following verse, Galatians 6 and the verse 8 says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And so this principle is a blessed principle because to those who sow righteousness, to those who sow to the Spirit, this verse is of immense encouragement. And I trust that you will see that today, that this principle should lift your heart. If you are a person who has sown righteousness and a person who has sown in the Spirit, God gives a reassurance to us today that those who seek God shall reap life everlasting. What does it mean? to sow in the Spirit. Well, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is very simple. It is to call us to Christ. It is to draw us irresistibly to Christ. It is the Holy Spirit's purpose to show to sinners their need of Jesus Christ 
and to reveal to them that he can save them. And so to sow to the Spirit means this. It means to respond to the Spirit's promptings. It means to heed the call of the Spirit to embrace Jesus Christ. It means to listen to the Spirit of God as he speaks to you from his holy word. You know, Jesus Christ said that the Spirit's purpose was this, to testify of Christ and to glorify Christ. And therefore, the Spirit of God's purpose is this, to convince you of your sin. Have you felt that? The Spirit of God working in your heart and you begin to see that you are corrupt and fallen and you need a Savior. That's the Spirit's work. But the Spirit also convinces of Christ's righteousness. He tells you of the perfection of Jesus Christ. He tells you that there is none like Jesus Christ to deliver you from your sin. He emphasizes to your soul how much you need him. And then the Spirit as well convinces you that there is judgment to coming and you need to heed the warnings. You need to flee to Christ now. Oh, that you would come humbly at this very moment under the influence of the Holy Ghost to Christ. To sow to the Spirit means this, that you flee to the one of whom the Spirit speaks and testifies. And what is the promise of God's word? We read in verse 8, He that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. You see, a wonderful thing will happen to you whenever you heed the message of the Holy Ghost, whenever you listen to the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God will make you a new creature. The Spirit of God will give you a new heart. The Spirit of God will give to you everlasting life. And how reassuring this principle is, therefore. If you sow to the Spirit, you will reap life everlasting. If you embrace the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be absolutely sure that you'll reap all of the blessings and the benefits of being saved by Jesus Christ. Here is a principle that gives to us certainty because we know that if we're in Christ, we're a new creation. No one can pluck us from the Father's hand. No one can take away what Christ has given to us. We have his life residing in us. Isn't that marvelous? The life of God in the soul of man. That's what Christ offers. But you know, this promise, it gives to us peace and contentment. And what contentment there is, as we know that what God has given, the blessing of sowing in the Spirit and receiving life, what peace and contentment that gives in this world, because we know that we're destined for glory. We know that we will enjoy what Christ has done. And you see, this is one of the amazing things about the gospel, is that we reap, we enjoy the benefits of Christ's sufferings. Do you understand that today? As Jesus Christ hung upon the cross and suffered, he did so in order to deliver sinners like you. And he suffered in order that you would reap the blessings of his sufferings, forgiveness, cleansing, reconciliation with God, acceptance into the family of God, a place in heaven, an inheritance with the saints. This is the reaping that you and I can enjoy because of all that Jesus Christ suffered. We receive grace because one has merited for us. We are saved because one has laid down his life for us. We enjoy bl the blessing of fellowship with God because one was alienated from God. Oh, what a blessed principle this is. 
And if you're not saved, this is a principle I exhort you to trust in and to apply to your own life. But then thirdly and finally, I want you to see that this is a fearful principle. Yes, it is a blessed principle, but it is also a fearful principle. We read in verse 8, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. You see, here is a principle that, yes, will bring great fruit of blessing in your life if the right seeds have been sown. But if the wrong seeds have been sown, it is a principle that guarantees great suffering, great loss, and great judgment. Oh, how fearful this principle is in this sense. Because a corrupt sowing will produce a corrupt harvest. To sow to the flesh, what does that mean? Well, it means to give your time and your energy to the satisfying of your sinful desires. Have you noticed that you do have desires? You want certain things. You want to gratify those desires that are in your life. And if you pursue them, if you follow after them, then you are doing what this verse is speaking of. You are sowing to the flesh. And the sad thing is that sowing to the flesh produces corruption. It produces destruction. It destroys us. You see, here's something that is so sad. As men and women pursue what they want, they actually go about destroying themselves. How often we see this. Have you not seen it? People's lives destroyed because of what they've sown. People's lives in ruins because of the decisions that they've made. Or the terrible grief and suffering endured by individuals and family and society as well this very evening because of what has been sown. To those who sow according to the flesh, to those who sow according to their natural desires, to those who sow contrary to God's word, what does it bring? It brings misery in this life. What misery there is when this principle is worked out in the life of a liar or a thief or an adulterer or a murderer. And we could go on. And isn't it true to say that this misery is not just restricted to that individual, but it, is, it spreads forth like an awful disease. It affects everybody who is associated with it. Again, do we not see that? By one man's sin, evil entered this world, and yet evil is across the face of this world tonight. And the misery that is brought is seen across the face of this world. Let me give you an example. What happens if you sow selfishness? If you're a selfish person and you indulge in that and you sow to selfishness, you will reap the pain of broken relationships. Your friends will leave you because they know that all you care about is yourself. You'll reap the harvest of alienated children. Because you are consumed with yourself, your children know that you do not really love them and they are alienated from you. And you may well end up reaping the harvest of divorce. Your spouse leaves you. And I point that out to show to you the awful misery that accompanies sowing to the flesh. The misery that is incurred in this life because of this fearful principle. If you sow sin, you will reap misery in this life. But then as well, those who sow to the flesh 
They bring judgment upon themselves in the next life. You see, the life that we now have is seed time. And think of it that way. This life that you're living at this very moment, it's like seed time. You are sowing the harvest that will be wrapped in eternity. And at death, we will pass into eternity and the harvest will be wrapped. What does a carnal life that is void of the glory of God, that is void of serving God. You see, such a life sows immediate and temporal gratification, but it reaps eternal ruin. I wonder, is that happening to you right now? You're sowing a harvest that will bring upon your soul eternal ruin when death comes and takes you away. And God's judgment will fall on you because you have not known God and you have not obeyed his gospel. And you will find in that awful moment as you pass from this life into the next that God's word was right. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Well, maybe as you hear this, you're filled with terror. What can be done for me, you say? I've made mistakes in my life. I have sown to the flesh. I have wrecked wickedness already. And I know that there's even more coming to me. And worst of all, eternal damnation is coming my way. Well, now, right now, you have an opportunity. Though you are a sinner, though you are deserving of God's judgment, to receive the mercy of God. Right now, there is forgiveness in Jesus Christ. There is mercy for those who have strayed. And therefore, tonight is you, and I trust that you face up to yourself and you consider your life in the light of this principle. And you realize that if you have not sown to the Spirit, then you're on a road to a last eternity. Then this very night, you need to sow to the Spirit. You need to embrace Jesus Christ. You need to come to the one who, despite all of your faults and all of your sin, can forgive you because he bore the punishment that we deserved, that you might receive forgiveness and everlasting life. All that this principle will not be forgotten. And in your life tonight, you will face up to yourself and acknowledge that if you have sown according to the flesh, then you are going to reap corruption. Unless you turn at this very moment to the one who is able to satisfy God's wrath, to the one who is able to deliver your soul. And if you embrace Jesus Christ and you say to him, I'm a sinner, I am in need of your salvation, and you're earnest and you're sincere, and you don't do so hypocritically, but you are genuine, then the promise of God's word is this, that those who come to Jesus Christ, he will not cast out. Or may each one of us here this evening live in the light of this principle, that whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. May God bless his word. Amen.